Well, we have men on the sides here who would love to put a Bible in your hand if you don't have one with you. And so if you need one, if you need a Bible this morning, go ahead and just raise your hand and we'll get one to you. And go ahead and open up your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verse 15 this morning together as we prepare our hearts for the celebration of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And as you're turning there, the true meaning of Christmas is one of the most confused realities. You can tell stores are preparing for Christmas when March rolls around. No, October rolls around. And all of a sudden you start seeing decorative lights and flammable or inflatable Santa Clauses and reindeer. If you enter Christmas into the search of your streaming subscription, it yields video after video of Santa and his reindeer. And all of these videos seem to be centered around the same plot of Santa mysteriously disappearing the night before Christmas and Christmas potentially being ruined for millions of people. There are many different pictures of what Christmas is supposedly to be about, and they are set forth for us. Christmas has been reduced at times to a moral evaluation of one's year. How did you do this last year? Were you good enough? Or maybe Christmas is about good things, but not the right thing. And so Christmas centers on family or Christmas centers around cookies and sweets and fellowship and giving. And there's a bombardment of reduced versions or views of what Christmas is about. And so I can't express how incredibly refreshing it is to be here this morning as the body of Christ, as the church in fellowship, singing songs that remind us and praise and worship God for the reality of what Jesus coming to earth, the incarnate second person of the Trinity, is about. What God taking on flesh is truly about, and it is clear that you, Grace Bible Church, you love the true meaning of Christmas. I love that, and I appreciate that so much. And it flows out of you, and it's a tremendous encouragement. But what I'd like to do this morning is to remind ourselves yet again of what Christmas is truly about in the midst of all of the attempts around us to detract from what Christmas must be about, let us put our eyes on the pages of Scripture together this morning, which so clearly communicates why Jesus came into the world. So let's look at one verse that really captures the essence of Christmas in a mere statement. And let's let that guide our hearts this morning. 1 Timothy 1, verse 15. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am the foremost of all. Would you pray with me? God, this morning as we join together as your people to worship your holy name, I pray that our hearts would be indeed fixed on you and your greatness, Lord, that you would let the truth of your word permeate within our hearts and really stay us this holiday season on what Christmas is all about, what it must be all about, what our celebration is for. Lord, I pray that you would capture our affections and our attention once again with the truth of your great gospel, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. This morning, we're going to answer the question, what must I remember about the incarnation this Christmas? What must I remember about the incarnation this Christmas? With all of the activities, with all of the obligations, with all of the fun and the parties and the presents and the decorations and the treats, what, what must I, what must we as followers of Jesus Christ remember this Christmas? There's three things. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.15 demonstrates that the gospel mission of God in the incarnation is number one, reliable. It is a reliable message. What we celebrate in Christmas is a reliable truth. Paul calls it a trustworthy statement. 
And in a fallen world where everything fails at some point, the reality of the gospel will not fail. The trustworthiness of the message of the gospel will never fail, regardless of us, regardless of our natural disposition to trust or not, regardless of if we have been betrayed in the past by false statements or false religions. This message will not fail. This message is trustworthy. It is reliable and it must be trusted. This message of the gospel that Jesus entered into the world to save sinners, this message is trustworthy. It is reliable. There's nothing in this statement that is false, slanted, distorted, compromised, misleading, incomplete, we see that God took on flesh with a purpose to save sinners. There was not a hidden agenda of the divine. Jesus came in flesh to accomplish the Father's will for the Father's glory, which came about through the rescuing of sinful, hopeless, helpless, rebellious men and women like me, like you. This is a truth you can count on. This is a, a fixed point of reference for our hearts. If you're ever struggling to know what to believe about God or what to believe about man, come back to this statement. This statement must be a, a buoy for our souls. And it seems like the most ludicrous statement that, that God would take on flesh, that the Messiah would come to save sinners. Just look for a moment back at verse 15. The trustworthy statement of which Paul is describing is the statement that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's the reliable truth. That's the trustworthy statement. That's what we can count on. And, and at first glance, it, it seems completely, completely unfathomable that the Messiah would come to save sinners. The second person of the triune God would descend and come into the world to save godless enemies of God, to rescue those who were enemies of God, to rescue those who rebelled against him. And yet in this message that seems too good to be true, we see a faithful word, a trustworthy word, a good statement, a dependable reality, a never failing truth. The world seems to encourage everyone to find their truth with no actual regard for the actual truth. And in the midst of a world like that, this statement stands above the rest as a trustworthy statement, a true statement, a dependable reality. The reality of what this truth represents is, is faithful, it is true, it is trustworthy. People make all sorts of claims. But this claim comes from the holy, righteous God. And this claim is reliable, it is trustworthy. We must remember that this Christmas. What must I remember about the incarnation this Christmas? The gospel mission of God and in the incarnation is number one, reliable. It is trustworthy. Next, number two, what must I remember this Christmas about the incarnation? It's this, the gospel mission of God and in the incarnation is number two, consequential. It's consequential. We see that in the phrase deserving full acceptance. This is a consequential statement. This statement that communicates the gospel mission of, of Jesus' incarnation to rescue sinners, it is consequential. It, it is deserving of full acceptance. The word for deserving here could also be translated worthy. It is deserving or worthy of full acceptance. And this word was used to describe the tipping of the scale. A weightiness is found that tips the scales. It's used to describe what is, what is weighty or of significance. This statement that Christ Jesus came into the world to rescue sinners. 
is not only trustworthy in that it is true and pure, but is, it is consequential in that it is a pertinent reality. This isn't just an abstract truth that, hey, it's a trustworthy statement, but it has no impact on your life. In fact, this statement of the purpose of the second person of the Trinity, Jesus coming to earth, taking on flesh to rescue sinners, that reality will have the greatest bearing if you choose to accept it on your eternity. No other truth will impact your eternal destiny to a greater degree than whether or not you believe this to be true. It is consequential. It is so significant, so significant that it demands full acceptance. It's worthy of full acceptance. And in being worthy of full acceptance, it does not simply mean a, a mere mental acceptance, but, but rather a faith, a faith that a, appropriates the statement for one's own soul. It is a, a spiritual apprehension of this reality. It is a complete acceptance in every way, without reservation, without hesitation, without doubt. It's not merely enough to say, oh, that, that Jesus came to the world. That's a, that's a nice story. I, I'll accept that. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. No, this demands all of us to embrace this reality. It is, it is worthy of, it tips the scales, it is deserving of full acceptance. Full embracing. Uh, does that describe you this morning? H have, you, have you accepted the reality of the gospel that, that Jesus entered in the, into the world to save sinners? H have you accepted this completely? It is worthy of such acceptance and anything less than full acceptance is actually rejection. Don't, don't be deceived. Don't think that you can merely mentally attest to the reality of this truth and not fully embrace it. And this really leads into our third reality that we're gonna look at and spend a little bit more time on this morning that we must understand about the incarnation. The mission, the gospel mission of the incarnation is, is needed. It's consequential. I'm sorry, it's reliable, it's consequential, and lastly, it's needed. The gospel mission of the incarnation is needed. It's needed by every single human being who has ever lived and ever will live. It's needed that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. There's a desperate, desperate need for each one of us. Paul even echoed as much when he says, among whom I am the foremost of all. Paul saw his sin. He saw it clearer than anyone else's around him. And that should describe each of us. Each of us should be acutely aware of what goes on in our lives and what goes on in our hearts and in the depths of our hearts and see that far more clearly than those around us. That should humble us help us recognize and see our, our desperate need for this gospel mission of God sending his son. The gospel mission of the incarnation is summarized here in the statement that has been the focus of this verse that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The, the Messiah, the Christ, came into the world. And in this simple statement, we see that the eternally existing second person of the Trinity condescended and took on flesh. He came into the world he created, which rebelled against him. The creator took on the form of creation and he did this to save sinners. You see the manger that we depict around Christmas time and, and see and celebrate was a, was a means to the end, which was the cross, which in fact we know wasn't the ultimate end. As Jesus rose from the gra grave, and what a glorious, hope-giving truth. We need to just pause right here for a moment at the shocking reality that Jesus the Christ took on flesh for the purpose of rescuing 
and saving sinners. The birth of Christ led way to the crucifixion of Christ in the place of sinners that he might rescue us. Rescue sinners. Think on this for a moment. The creator of all, the eternally existing God, he didn't come for the righteous. He didn't come to fellowship with those who were good enough. He didn't look at each of our last year and evaluate whether or not we merited something good from him. There wasn't an elite group of whom he was willing to condescend to be with. He came to earth. He humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross for sinners. Have you ever felt like tainted goods? I'm too far gone. You don't know about my past. I mean, this this saving work of God, there's just no way that he would have that kind of grace and love for me. Maybe there's secrets in your life of things you've done that you can't imagine a holy God ever being willing to embrace you as his child because of. But listen, Jesus came for the sinner. That's each one of us. Each one of us are sinners. He came to rescue people like that. That's what makes the reality so captivating. That's what makes this such amazing news. The the gospel represents something truly miraculous and marvelous, that salvation is available for anyone who would repent and believe in Christ. Jesus came to rescue sinners. He came for his people that he would change, that he would redeem, that he would rescue, that he would call out of darkness and bring into light. And as he hung on the cross, he took the judgment, the punishment, the wrath of God for each one who would repent and believe and fully accept the reality of his work as the only means, the only acceptable means to satisfy the judgment that each one of us deserves. What a wonderful, wonderful truth. So much deeper, so much more significant, so trustworthy, reliable, consequential. Truth. The world can't touch this kind of celebration that would look to these things and worship God for them. The heart of Christmas is the heart of a loving God who would take on flesh, who would dwell among his his creation, who would die in the place of rebels. Again, Paul calls himself the worst of sinners. Jesus came to save him. If you feel hopeless in your sin and are even doubting the reality that God would desire to save you, listen, it's it's a trustworthy statement. It's a trustworthy statement. It's reliable and it deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to rescue sinners for all who would believe in him. Salvation is available for you and and being a sinner doesn't disqualify you from this offer of salvation. The filth of our sinfulness and desperate need of saving actually accentuates the beauty of Christmas. The heart of Christmas is this reality. Christ came into the world to save sinners. Christ was manifest to take away sin. The real beauty of Christmas is to understand the ugliness, the ugliness that Christmas remedies. Our sinfulness. Sin is a very real problem. 
It's a very real problem that had no solution. It has no solution apart from God, no answer. Sin pervades the entire world. Because of sin, there are tears and pain and sorrow. We know this well the last couple years as a church body. There are things such as war and quarreling and anxiety and discord and unrest and fear and worry and sickness and death. All sorts of natural disasters and tragedies, all of those things which mar our existence are the direct result of sin. Sin disturbs and disrupts every human relationship, whether between man and man or man and creation or man and God. Thomas Watson said this, sin has turned beauty into deformity and the wicked takes more care to have his sin covered than cured. And yet God provided a cure where all we wanted to do was cover it, call it something different. Mankind seeks every which way to excuse his sin, to rename his sin, to belittle his sin, to esteem his sin as good rather than to be broken over sin. You see, the reason that Christ was born was to be the savior who came to deliver men from sin. If there were no sin, there would be no need for Christmas Christmas isn't a feel-good story of worthy creation who merited a visit from an impressed God. Christmas is a tragic story of mankind who in its rebellion had no hope and a holy God condescended in love despite the atrocious sinfulness of his own creation. So sinful was man that mankind did not embrace or know God as divinity, no Jesus as divinity when he came, but crucified him. That Jesus came to save sinners. The meaning of Christmas isn't that we dig deep down inside to embrace our inner good. Christmas is about a humble God rescuing sinners who had no good, were under condemnation because of their sin, living in a cursed world, affected because of their sin. Every disaster, illness, death, every broken marriage, every disrupted home, every shattered friendship, every argument, every ungodly disagreement, every evil thought, evil word, evil deed, every good deed undone, good thought unthought, good word unsaid can be attributed ultimately to the fact that sin entered the world and it did so through man. Our sin contributes. And what makes Christmas truly captivating, truly amazing, truly the feel-good story is something completely separate from us, and it has everything to do with God. What makes Christmas truly captivating, truly astonishing, truly amazing, truly worthy of intentional celebration and remembrance is the love of God. The love of God who provided a way of salvation through his own son coming in flesh, living in holiness under the law. What no one else could do so that he would be an acceptable sacrifice and a suitable substitute for sinners as he went to the cross. When he went to the cross, he bore the wrath and the judgment and the condemnation for sin that all believe who all who believe in Jesus deserved. If you're a Christian, He hung in your place. We can celebrate today because of his sorrow on that day. This is what Jesus did and it's what he accomplished. And he accomplished all that he set out to do. You see, it's it's a reliable truth. It deserves full acceptance. The incarnation was completely effective. Effective. Nothing should have happened, but didn't. Everything went according to God's perfect plan to accomplish God's intentions. Nothing happened that shouldn't have happened and nothing didn't happen that should have. Everything God intended was accomplished. And in Jesus' first coming, it has paved the way for salvation, 
through his perfect life, sacrificial death, and his resurrection for the forgiveness of sins. And it is paved a way for his second coming, which will bring the fulfillment of all of his promises his perfect reign, the effects of sin on this earth will be lessened until the day that this heaven and earth are done away with. You see, we just cannot let ourselves limit our celebration of Christmas. What the incarnation represents and reveals is truly amazing. Truly astonishing. It is life-giving. It is hope bringing. It is comfort for the afflicted. It is strengthening for the weary. It is hope for the hopeless. It brings life to those spiritually dead. It brings joy to the faint of heart. And most importantly, it is a means of reconciliation for the rebel to God. All that God would be glorified, seen as the great God that he is. And the only way that Christmas can mean this to you is if you are one of those whom Jesus came to save. Jesus came to save sinners. Have you accepted this reality? Is this true of your heart? If it is, then I encourage you, remember these things as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Rejoice in these things. Worship God because of these things. Stay your heart in moments of despair with these things. If that is not you, I would plead with you to repent. That is, to turn from a rejection of God. Embrace him. Accept him. Believe upon him. What must we remember about the incarnation this Christmas? We must remember a benevolent God who condescended, taking on flesh, so that he might provide a way through his own death to save sinners. Let every gift you give this Christmas, every gift you receive, remind you of the greatest gift of all, which is Christ Jesus. Let us know this reliable, trustworthy message, accepting it fully, knowing that we stand right next to Paul, who states that Jesus came to rescue sinners of whom he is the foremost. We all desperately needed Christ to enter the world. We all desperately needed to be saved from our sins. And he has provided a way. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your amazing love. We thank you that you took on flesh, that Jesus, you came to earth. That you chose to do so to glorify, to glorify the Father through the rescuing of helpless, godless sinners. Lord, I pray that we would believe this true statement Lord, that we would be captivated in wonder and awe at this reality. I pray that it would just exude from us joy in you as ones who have been redeemed, have been saved, have been rescued by your tremendous work. And I pray that at the center of everything we do these coming days and really for the rest of our lives, Lord, would be this truth that we were in desperate need and you provided a way. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful, beautiful statement of good news, this gospel that we love. We praise you and we thank you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.